We are live. Happy Friday. Um, a couple things uh, when we get started here. So, number one, I did not shower yet today. So, when I don't shower and shave, I kind of look like I have a mustache. I am not growing a mustache. Just to be clear, I will not be growing a mustache. Okay, I just want to get that out there because that can be awkward. Number two, if you have not subscribed to my sports newsletter, you should. It's called The Replay. Uh, I'll put a link in. Uh, it's fun. It's good. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying writing about it. Uh, these, these are my ideas for the week. We got Caitlin Kark in perspective, college basketball, the UFL, Austin Matthews, history of brackets, March Madness, best calls of Final Four. This is how I keep my notes. And then the third thing, and this is awkward. So before I came on, I went and got myself a sandwich at Starbucks. I know I'm not supposed to do that, but I went and got myself a sandwich at Starbucks. And I... Uh, also got a T. So I see it and I just grab it, right? I see the sandwich with Chris on it and I grab the T next to it. Brin, venti chai tea latte, no water, cinnamon spice. How bad an offense is that? So I'm, I'm drinking Brin's chai tea latte with no water and cinnamon powder. I feel bad. Anyway, okay, I'm here to answer your questions. Let's do this. Um, uh, Chris Murphy, 2000. Hi, Chris. Glad your mom is okay. Thank you. By the way, for people who don't read my Substack, stack, um, although you should, uh, I had to take my mom to the emergency room on Monday because she had pain in her back and her heart was racing. Um, but she's totally fine. No heart attack, no nothing. She's all good. So thank you. Uh, what is your favorite debate in modern history. I really enjoyed the Obama-Romney first debate in 2012. It was substantive, civil, and engaging. So I guess you have to, great question. I guess I kind of have to differentiate between like primary debates and general election debates. The general election debates, with the exception of 2020, are much more civil, right? They're easier to digest because it's a one-on-one -on -one debate as opposed to a like nine or 10 or 12 person debate. Um, the Obama-Romney one was good. I remember that. I, I remember that Obama was actually not particularly good in that debate, um, and his people panicked um, because he just came across as kind of like, Pfft. but the debate was interesting, and I thought Romney was good. Um, let's see. I don't have like an obvious one that jumps to mind. I mean, the 2020 ones are the one that are freshest in my mind. I wouldn't describe those as like good. It depends what you mean by good debate, right? So um, good debate, like a lot of back and forth. Uh, a lot of like TV moments or good debate, like a substantive policy discussion. Obviously 2020 was not a good substantive policy discussion. Um, uh, it was more back and forth, but at least it was memorable. Uh, by the way, and no one asked, I do not think there will be debates this time around. I'd be surprised if there were ideal idol says I was fond of the D VP debate featuring Dan Quayle. Okay. Yeah. Um, Politics Nerd 2008. Happy April, Chris. Happy April to you. Last week, I seemed to imply I skipped breakfast for tea. Curious why that is. So I, I've gone back and forth with intermittent fasting. Sometimes I do it in the morning. Sometimes I don't. Um, I feel like when I eat in the morning, what I wind up eating is like a pastry or like a muffin or like a scone or like a cheese danish. And I shouldn't eat that. So I've gone to just drinking tea or coffee. So that's what I do. I don't do it all the time, but I do it some of the time. Does that make sense? Okay. Chris Fan Club 21. Oh, wow. Maybe not me, Chris. Why do I not like UConn? Aren't you from Connecticut? Yes, I am from Connecticut, but I hate, hate Jim Calhoun, who is the longtime men's basketball coach. He is a jerk. He is awful to reporters. He's rude. He, for, forever, he was the highest paid state employee because he worked for a state university and he made millions and millions of dollars. And he's just a jerk to reporters. And I hate when people are jerks to reporters for no reason. So also I went to Georgetown. So I learned to dislike UConn there. I don't really hate them. Like I hate Syracuse. I mean, I hate Syracuse. So I don't like hate, hate UConn. They're fine. I have nothing against them. Danny Hurley kind of annoys me, but whatever. I mean, like, you know, I don't, it's not like a white hot hatred that I feel for Syracuse, but I do not root for them. Um, let's see. Uh, pool boy, Dave, do I have a favorite political memoir? Just read James Comey's a higher loyalty. You know what? I don't think that I do. I have a favorite political book. I think I have it here. Yeah. This is my favorite political book. What it takes Richard Ben Kramer. This is about the 1988 
presidential campaign. It came out in 1990. Uh, Richard, unfortunately, has passed. Um, but this book is amazing. It's thick, as you can see. Um, read it for, I know you'll say like 88, who cares? Well, Biden ran for president in 88 for the first time. And there's a ton of great stuff about Biden there. If you've never read that book, you should read it. But in terms of a memoir, I feel like I don't read a ton of memoirs, some political or otherwise. So maybe that's, that's why. Um, let's see. WGO Etrick. What do you think about CNN now? Mm. Nothing bad. Um, you know, I think a lot of people think that I have some ill will or what, that I could have ill will towards CNN. Not really. Like, that place was great to me. Uh, gave me a huge platform. Uh, gave me a chance to talk about politics on TV, write about politics for the web. Um, I met a ton of people I really like and have stayed in touch with. Like, they were cost-cutting, and I made a bunch of money, and they needed to get rid of it. <laughs> like, I get it. I don't blame Chris Lick for that, right? I mean, he had his own problems. Like, I don't blame him for any of that stuff. Like, I, you know, it's, it, it happens. Uh, so, no, I don't really feel bitter. The, the thing about it is, like, I don't really, I, I don't want to dwell in that. Like, if I, if I, I was upset, I don't want to dwell in, like, bad feelings, right? Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think about it a ton, if I'm being honest. I mostly think about, like, YouTube and Substack and other ways that I can build, um, uh, audience now on my own. So like, I don't know. I just don't think about it all that much. Um, let's go. I'm just hopping around. By the way, if you have questions, throw them in the chat, please. Um, who are the next, this is Sean D. Who are the next rising stars for Democrats in 2028 and beyond? Josh Shapiro and Andy Bashir come to mind. Unfortunately, Gavin Newsom too. Well, I don't know why you don't like Gavin Newsom, but yes, you are right. Gavin Newsom is someone who was going to be around in 2028. Um, I think he'll run for president. Uh, because either way, the Democratic nomination will be open, right? If Biden wins a second term, it'll be open. If Biden loses, it'll be open. Um, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I think Josh Shapiro, for sure, the governor of Pennsylvania. I put Gretchen Whitmer in there, the governor of Michigan. Um, I'm trying to think of who in the Senate is kind of interesting. Cory Booker, I think, will run for president again from New Jersey. I think Amy Klobuchar will. I don't know if these people count as rising stars. Amy Klobuchar will run uh, again at some point from Minnesota. Um Andy Bashir is an interesting guy. So Andy Bashir, for people who don't know, is the governor of Kentucky. He just got reelected in 2023 to a second term, which is amazing. A Democrat elected statewide in Kentucky. The problem is, is like in a Democratic presidential primary, he's pretty moderate uh, on a bunch of stuff because you have to be because it's new Kentucky, right? It's not easy to get elected there if you're a Democrat, period much less statewide. So some of his positioning, I think, is probably going to be to the right of where the base of the party is. And I think that could be somewhat problematic. Does that make sense? Uh, let's see. Sean, North Carolina has always been close in previous elections. Do you think Biden campaign can reach their goal of winning at this cycle? How did they gain support where there when they lost last time? All right. So let me hold on. Do I have? So I always keep this handy. This is one of my notes. Really? Wait. It's one of my anxiety notes. This is the 2022 Almanac of American Politics, which I always keep handy. I just want to get the exact numbers uh, of the, here we go. Here's North Carolina. Okay. In 2020, uh, Trump got 2,758,775 votes for 50%, and Biden got 2,684,292 votes for 49%. So that was a margin of a little less than like 80,000 in 2016 Trump, uh, Trump got 2.3 million and Hillary got 2.1 ish million for like 120,000 margin. Um, I guess I'm a little skeptical about North Carolina. I, I think it is still like a scintilla more Republican than Democratic. I, I will say, though, that Mark Robinson, who's lieutenant governor of the state, who's running for governor, is, is probably the most extreme major party nominee for governor in the country this year. Um, and, I, you know, he has said and done many things that the, that the Democratic uh, guy for governor's name is Josh Stein. He's the attorney general is going to make a big deal out of. Does that drive turnout? Usually, I don't think down ballot races drive turnout uh, to the top of the ticket. Usually, it's the top of the ticket driving turnout downward. Um, but Mark Robinson is a big enough figure and has said enough weird stuff and controversial stuff and just plain bad stuff that maybe, maybe, I don't know. Um, and, and again, that margin is really, really, really narrow between Trump and Biden in 2020. Um, 
I still think that's, if we're naming swing states, I think that's the seventh most competitive out of the seven swing states. So let's see if I can do this. This is like Rick Perry. I'm getting rid of three uh, government uh, agencies. Uh, whoops. Okay, so let me see if I can name them. So uh, Arizona and Georgia, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, um, Nevada, North Carolina. I, I think that's, and I would put North Carolina as the last one in that group. Um, I, I just think it's, it, the numbers are really close. I'm not saying the numbers aren't, but I just think it's hard to hard to win it. Uh, by the way, reminder, uh, people, I do this every Friday. I think it's fun. Hold on, got a button issue. Um, I uh, really enjoy talking to folks live-ish. I know we're not like in a video chat together, but I really enjoy it. So um, I'm going to keep doing it, trying to build my channel. We're at 20,500 subscribers or 600 subscribers, which is amazing. I also make videos every single day. Uh, I shouldn't say that every single weekday, Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, I do this live stream. Um, so yeah, spread the word. I talk mostly about politics, but uh, I talk about other stuff too. Uh, and for people who don't know, I was at the Washington post as a political reporter for 10 years and then Washington post for five years. And then since then, I have been writing on my own uh, Substack. Uh, there's a politics newsletter called So What? There's a sports newsletter called The Replay. And there's this. Anyway, that's me. All right. Keep uh, keep uh, bringing your questions in. Uh, doo -doo. Uh, Sean, will any of the trials and appeals be finished before November 5th? So I presume, I presume you're talking about the Trump trials. Uh, so the only one I think that could be is this one that starts April 15th, the hush money. This is the money that Trump allegedly paid to Michael Cohen, who then paid it to Stormy Daniels to keep her quiet about the alleged affair that she and Trump had in the run-up to the 2016 election. <sighs> That's a mouthful. Um, so that trial is supposed to start April 15th, and I think it will. Do we get a verdict and everything, and does the appeals process fully run its course by November 5th? I don't know. Probably? I, I don't know. The other three... Uh, I don't think we're going to get, tr certainly not going to get uh, decisions on, but I don't even think we're going to get trials on until after the election. I think all of them, the Georgia case, uh, the classified documents case, and the 2020 election case, I think are all going to push beyond the election. So I think this is the one where you're going to get a trial and 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 probably a verdict of some sort. Uh, and it's probably the least serious of all of them. I mean, the allegations that Trump falsified business records for the $130,000 he allegedly paid Cohen to pay Stormy Daniels. Um, but I mean, it's not nothing like I've never been indicted, so I'm not going to try to minimize indictments, but uh, out of all of them, I think it's the least serious, but I think it's the one that probably goes to trial and, and, and something, uh, happens with, uh, I see quantum of Zen. Only the hush money trial seems likely to finish before November. That's exactly right. I think that's the right read. Uh, Gecko 194. Do you think abortion ballot measures give Democrats a significant boost in the applicable states? Okay, so interesting question. So uh, if you followed it this week, we got word from the Florida State Supreme Court that the six-week abortion ban that Ron DeSantis and the legislature passed down there can go into effect. But they also ruled separately that there can be a vote on a constitutional amendment that would make it a 24-week ban, which is obviously much more lenient, much longer time, uh, in November. So that's the third state. New York is another one, and I think Maine is the other one right now, that have uh, measures on the ballot this November that will make it uh, that will loosen the, the restrictions on, on abortions um, in, in the state. 11 states are trying to total put them on the ballot and three have put them on the ballot. Does it matter? You know, I do think marginally, I mean, you know, it's hard to, to equate the past to the present, but you know, in 2004, George W. Bush and really Carl Rove went out of his, their way to put gay marriage um, ballot measures uh, across in swing states, essentially to draw their base out. These were to oppose um uh, gay marriage uh, in the states. Obviously, that's been wiped out by the Supreme Court, but in 2004, it was a big issue. Did it help marginally? Yeah, probably. Just to generate excitement in the base and, and interest in the base. Um, could this have the same effect? Yeah. So I did. Um, I do a mailbag every Friday where I answer folks' questions on my political substack. And one of the questions was, if there's one issue, thing, event that you would highlight as what Joe Biden you talk about a lot, what is it? And I said abortion. I mean, it's not even close. Um, hugely powerful issue, terrible issue for Republicans, an issue they don't know um, 
how to respond to. So Donald Trump was asked this week when he's going to have a position on abortion. He said next week. Believe it when I see it. He often says next week when he doesn't want to answer something. Um, so it's a bad issue for Republicans and a really good one for Democrats. So I would expect Biden to talk a lot about it. He already has been, but I expect him to talk more and more and more and to highlight the fact that, look, Donald Trump appointed three conservative justices during his time in office. That was the majority that voted to uh, overturn Roe v. Wade in 2022. So, I mean, there's a direct link between Donald Trump and where we are now on abortion. Um, let's see. Dragon fire. Will the bond posted by Trump for $175 million bounce because the Mr. Hankey is not registered in New York? I don't know. Uh, really good question. Um, I don't think it will, but it might, by the way, this is good. Bring's drink. If you're just signing on, I accidentally stole someone else's drink at Starbucks. I thought it was mine and I grabbed it and I drank it and it was not mine. It's Brin's venti chai tea latte, no water, cinnamon powder. It's quite good. How big a crime is that? Like, should I feel bad about that? I didn't do it on purpose, you know, but I still did it. Brin is going to go in there and have to have that drink remade. Sean asks, how does it taste? It tastes pretty good. Um, let's see. Uh, Mike Smithgall, you mentioned the other day, you didn't think Trump would run in 20, would, uh, you didn't think Trump would run in 2028, but what will he do? How does he stay relevant? I actually said, I think Trump could well run in 2028. So my view on Trump is, uh, my friend, Jonathan last, uh, who writes for the bulwark wrote a thing on how, if Trump is elected in 2024, they will find ways to try to make him run in 2028. My thing is that's really hard because it's in the constitution and amending the constitution is not easy. And yes, it could happen, but it would be hard. My view is the more likely Trump 2028 scenario is this. Trump loses in 2024. He again says that he was robbed and he didn't lose and it was election interference, which he's going to say no matter what. And he just ports over to keep running for president. I don't see why he wouldn't. It's a good business model for him, right? He raises tons of money, pay helps pay his legal fees. Um, so I could see that happening. So I actually think there is a real possibility um, that he runs again in 2028. But I think it's more likely if he loses in 2024 than if he wins in 2024 because of the, that little thing I call the constitution. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Jurgen Vogel, what will happen to MAGA and or GOP after Trump loses the third election in a row? Will there be a split? Well, he's only lost one election as far as I can tell, which was 2020. He won in 2016. Um, you may mean like the 2020 election, then the 2022 midterms, and then the 2024 election. But look, do I think Trump had some role in, in what happened in 2022? Sure, but he wasn't on the ballot, so it's kind of hard to like blame him for that, in my opinion. Um, again, I just, the thing about it is usually what happens when someone loses a presidential election is they kind of go away, right? Like at least for some period of time. But if you never say you lose, then you don't need to go away, right? Donald Trump never went away after 2020. He just kept campaigning. First, it was on like, I won in 2020. Then it was on like, well, I'm going to win. I'm going to run in 2024 to avenge myself. Like, what reason do we have to think that Donald Trump would, in 2024, suddenly, it, it, in late 2024, suddenly admit like, yeah, you know what? I did lose this one. I mean, he's already claiming election interference, and it's, you know, uh, April. So he, by the time we get to November, if he loses, you can bet he's going to say he didn't actually lose. So, you know, I, I think there is a real possibility that he just says, they robbed me again. I'm still the head of the party. I still like the power. I still like the authority. I still like the position. I'm going to keep running. So I don't think anything will happen. Marcy B, have I made anything with chickpeas yet? I've not made anything with chickpeas yet, but I have eaten a lot of hummus and pretzels this week. Thank you for your advice on the uh, snacks. Um, Topher793, did I feel the earthquake? I did not. Um, I saw it on Twitter as soon as it happened, but no. Here in the lovely suburban Washington area, there was no uh, reverberations of any sort. Though there was an earthquake probably 10 or 15 years ago now. 10. And I was down in Washington for it. And it was creepy. I ran out of a building because I'm like George Costanza pushing women and children aside to get out. Um, Terry Height says, have fruit for breakfast, a banana. Yeah, I could do that. I don't love bananas, but yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> 
Sam says, do you think Bryn is doing a live stream talking about the order for Chris she took? I don't think so. Again, sorry, Bryn. Um, let's see. Pierre Holmes, did you see RFK Jr.'s interview with Aaron Burnett? He said Biden is silencing him on social media. It kind of echoes what Trump has been saying about Biden. What do I think? I did, and I wrote about this on my uh, political substack. Subscribe. Just type Substack and Chris Eliza. It'll come up. Um, you know, <laughs> he... he this is hard. I don't totally know. I don't, I don't know exactly what I think about RFK Jr. Other than particularly on vaccines, I think he's a conspiracy theorist. Um, I don't know that everything he says is based on a conspiracy theory. Um, I don't know what he means when he says that Biden is stifling him or silencing him on social media. He didn't really give an example of that. Um, do I think some of the points he makes about like corporate America and their influence over the federal government are right on? I do. Right. I mean, I think big corporations do have a lot of say in how regulations either get made or don't get made at the USDA or NIH or whatever. Um, but there's so much other stuff there where I'm like, yeah. So, no, I, I mean, look, my whole thing always is show me the evidence. If if Joe Biden is silencing you on social media, I don't know how he would do that because he doesn't own social media companies. But, you know, OK, like show me the evidence. Uh was Bryn's drink cheaper than mine? No. So I got a venti Emperor Clouds tea, which is just a plain old tea with milk in it. And this is a chai tea latte. Oh, boy. Um, Dragonfire, if you steal somebody's Starbucks coffee, go to jail. Do not collect 200. Oh, it's so brutal. I know. James Trussler, uh, Trump Jr. 2028. Good question. Um, I don't think so um i mean i don't know i don't here's the thing i don't know so um i okay donald trump jr by the way keep asking questions uh love to have you we're almost to 200 <coughs> concurrent viewers which is awesome uh so keep asking questions in the chat i will try to answer as many as i can in about 45 minutes because i got to go to lexington virginia later today if you have advice on where to eat in lexington virginia or where to drink coffee in lexington virginia i'd love to hear it put it in the chat um so Don Jr. wants to run for office. Um, he has uh, made no attempt to hide that interest. Um, <clears throat> would Don Jr. run in 2028 rather than Don Sr.? Um, possible. I mean, look, Donald Trump likes to keep it in the family. Like, all his closest advisors are his family. All his closest business advisors, all his closest political advisors, they're always his family, right? So it's not super surprising that I could see that. And, you know, could could Don Jr. run and win for president? My gosh, I mean, I would. my, my initial thought is, like, definitely not. But at the same time, like, Donald Trump got elected president. So, like, you know, I mean, I, the, the kind of saying like he doesn't have the character or the temperament, like what? what? So sure. I think Trump's natural instinct will be to hand his political legacy off to a family member. I think he'd probably prefer Ivanka, uh, but I don't think she wants to run. So Don Jr. would be next in line. Uh, I, I just don't know. Stephen Williams says, I don't think Donald Trump Jr. can get enough support to run ever. You know, I, I don't think so either, but like, I don't, totally no um like i i just i it's really hard for me to ever to never say never when it comes to trump because like i can't believe he's in office in the first place i can't believe he's the republican front runner again or the republican nominee again so like ruling things out as it relates to him feels like dumb so i'm not going to do that uh let's see is RFK in most states? So I assume you mean on the ballot in most states. The answer to that right now is no. I think he is currently qualified for the ballot. That He said he qualified for, for the ballot in North Carolina this week, which I think made for five states that he's qualified for the ballot. He told Aaron Burnett he's going to qualify for every ballot and the District of Columbia. I mean, I have no reason to say he won't. The only thing I'll say about it is um, it's hugely expensive to do this. So every state has its own set of rules of how you get onto the ballot. Um, some require a lot of signatures. Some require not that many signatures. In some states, you got to get signatures from every congressional district. In some states, you don't. But it's labor-intensive and expensive. Uh, Kennedy, interestingly enough, you would just assume he's a Kennedy. He's rich. They don't have all that much money. He's married to Cheryl Hines, who played Larry David's wife on Curb. Um, 
He's worth like $15 million, which again is plenty of money, but not enough to finance a whole presidential campaign, which is why I think he picked Nicole Shanahan as his vice president's running mate. She is the former, the ex-wife of Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google. Uh, they have a massive divorce settlement. The terms weren't disclosed, but you can assume she got plenty of money. So I assume she's going to fund a bunch of that. So let's assume he is on the ballot. I mean, we don't know yet. Five states is not 50 states, so we're not there yet. Um, just Diney. Trump kids will never amount to anything. Okay. Sam, I know you consider, you've said you consider yourself a centrist. Are there any issues in particular you are passionate about beside banning cruises? I am passionate about banning cruises. Cruises are the worst. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very, and this is a little bit, this doesn't make me look good, but I'm very focused on the stuff that impacts my life. And the, the one that always comes up is food allergies. My eldest son has a severe life-threatening peanut allergy. <clears throat> um, I don't know for people who don't know about allergies and food allergies. Um, EpiPen was the maker of the, the sort of one uh, thing that helped uh, you buy you some time. If your kid had eaten something that caused anaphylaxis, uh, you had to get him to the hospital, but the pricing on EpiPen was so beyond ridiculous it was like eight hundred dollars for a two-pack not covered by insurance and the woman who ran it uh was joe by joe mansion's daughter yeah so i got a little fiery about that there are a few alternatives now out there which is great and there's also a drug now that just was approved by the fda that allows for um kids with uh, or people with uh foodborne allergies to take and it it um, helps. I think it's called Zolaire. It helps with the, um, effects, but yeah, that's the one I get most passionate about. And again, I, I know it's a little self-absorbed because it has to do with me, but that's where I, that's where I get. Um, let's see. Uh, Don Jr. I can see him running for president. I would hate it, but maybe yes. Yeah, I know. Uh, I could see it kind of too. Okay, Stephen Williams, the Virginia earthquake was in August 2011, so it was 13 years ago. I remember it because I was helping my daughter moving into her dorm room at JMU when it happened. Yeah, I was on Capitol Hill, lunch with my wife, ran out of there, Costanza style. Um, uh, let's see. Notorious CRG says, how about break the politics streak and answer the sports questions? Gladly. Hold on. Let me. I don't see the sports questions. Hold on. Let me scroll. I'm going to start from the beginning. I will answer any and all sports questions that you have. If you promise to subscribe to my uh, sub stack called the replay, which is about sports. Um, hold on. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I answered the Yukon question. Uh, oh, there's the thumb. Sorry. Uh, to do, oh, I need more sports questions. I don't see any of these. I don't see any these supposed sports questions that are out there. Um, here's Travis Michaels. This isn't a sports question, but I missed this. If there were debates, would it help hurt Trump or Biden more? Um, by the way, we're at 200 uh, people watching. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, good question. I think so. Trump has been pushing for debates. He did it this week in, I think he was in Michigan. He had an empty podium next to him. Like this is for Joe Biden weird but whatever he did that um i think trump wants them more because i think they think that biden will look old and kind of not with it and that will help trump and that trump even though he is four years younger than biden not by a lot you know not significantly younger that he looks younger uh and kind of acts younger and will come across as younger uh, so I think there's a reason the Biden people haven't said, yes, we will debate you because I'm not sure they want to debate uh, who would come across better. Like in the 2020 debates, uh, there were two of them. The third one was canceled because of COVID. Um, you know, I, Trump was like hectoring and bullying and interrupting. And, you know, I guess some people like that. I, I thought Biden was better um, in the debates, but that was that like Trump only has one gear. I mean, he, he's not going to like be thoughtful and policy focused in the debates. So you kind of know what you're getting. Um, I didn't think they helped him a whole hell of a lot, but what, what do I know? You know, uh, anyway, um, let's see. I'm, I'm continuing. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Notorious CRG. Who are your top three NBA players of all time? The greatest of all times. So I did miss your question. Apologies. Uh, Michael Jordan, number one. Sorry. I'm a child of the 1990s. Uh, LeBron. And I think I would put Kareem third. I feel like Kareem gets overlooked a lot these days. Uh, so I think I would go Jordan, LeBron, definitely. And then I think Kareem. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, 
hit that like button. Yes, hit that like button. Hit that like button. Uh, David Osberg, let's play pretend. Okay, I wake up November 6th to the headline, RFK wins. What does the popular vote in Electoral College look like? Um, well, the, So the popular vote would be like 36, 35, 34, something like that, you know, in some order. The Electoral College, I mean, he could only win, I think, with like 272 or something. I, I can't imagine he wins with th- he would win with 300. It seems like far-fetched to me, but it would be something like that. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, Nathan Real, what point do you think, at what point do you think uh, Trump's legal problems will actually negatively affect him in the polls because he keeps getting into deeper trouble and he is strangely ahead? Yeah. Um, I don't think they will affect him. I think it's baked in. Uh, I think people are... The people most outraged about Trump's legal problems weren't going to vote for him anyway. The people who don't care about Trump's legal problems were going to vote for him anyway. And we're talking about, sorry, we're talking about a very small group of people uh, who are undecided about the election, about whom I don't know if the legal problems have any impact. I think generally speaking, like all the stuff with Trump is kind of baked in the cake that people are like, well, it's Trump. Like, I, I know you probably, you shouldn't do that, but I think people do that. So I don't think, I don't think if he's convicted in, let's say this hush money case, which I think is the only one that's going to go to trial. I don't think suddenly there's going to be like a run on people getting away from Trump. I, I just don't see it. Uh, Alicia Glauser. Good for you, Chris. Just move on with what is working for you today. Love the show. Yeah. This is, I assume about CNN. Yeah. I mean, whatever, man, it was a great platform. I thought I did a good job for them. I was happy with the work I produced. Yeah. They made a business decision. It happens. Uh, I always show people these. Um, uh, Hold on. I've got all these post-it notes that I keep on my desk. This is the one that I always go to. This happened. Now you get to respond. You don't control everything that happens in your life, right? Sometimes it's for good. Sometimes it's for bad. But you don't get to control everything. You get to control how you react to it. And like, look, I was sad and upset and angry, uh, but I didn't want to stay in that space, right? Like, I, I kind of wanted to do other stuff, so I'm trying to do other stuff. But yeah, thanks, Alicia. Um, Why did you mention a few weeks back that you weren't just going to cover Trump, but now most of your videos for the last two weeks have been about Trump? Is there nothing else going on in politics? This is by Ghost Hack. You know, that's a good, I don't think I said I wasn't going to cover Trump. If I did, I didn't mean it. I mean, he's one of the two people running for, he's one of the two people with a chance to be the president in 2025. So I'm going to cover him. Um, in terms of the volume of videos and what they're about. Um, yeah, I'm, I honestly, I'm sort of debating that myself every day. Right. So every day I kind of get up and I start thinking like, what would make a good, what do I want to talk about that day? You know, I try to be as, um, real and authentic as possible. Like the thing that's most on my mind is the thing I like to talk about. I try not to be like, well, I talked about Trump yesterday, so I can't talk about him today. I do want to expand that out though. I want to talk about the Senate. Uh, I want to talk about Biden some, Um, but this week, at least I did notice there were a bunch of Trump videos. So uh, it's something on my mind. I appreciate your feedback. It's something I think about. Uh, Again, I'm mostly just doing it. It's not like there's some uh, formula that I come up with on what to make a video about. It's mostly just like, Hey, uh, what, what is on my mind today that I want to talk about that I think is important. So it's often Trump, but anyway, um, just dining says, yes, I'm sick of Trump, but you kind of have to look like I, again, my thing, the, the, um, the thing with Trump is you can't ignore him. Uh, he has a coin flip chance of being the next president of the United States. And if he is, that would represent a fundamental shift in the way in which the presidency and democracy is defined in this country. I, I just don't think you can ignore him. Uh, is LeBron the GOAT, MJ, Kareem, someone else? I think Michael is still the GOAT for me. A sports question. Um, Dustin Ramsey, have you watched the Hulu FX series Shogun? How do you feel about the political machinations of that era in Japan versus America today? Uh, I haven't watched it. But I will. It's on the list. I'll put it on the list. Um, Sarah H., hello. Got to love a little chat with Chris Lizza. I love it. I love it. You know who doesn't love it? Bryn stole her chai tea latte. I still feel bad about this. Um, Richard Hurst, what are my thoughts on if Trump declares victory on election night, even if losing? I mean, I think he's going to do that. <laughs> it's not, in my opinion, it's not an if, it's a when. Um, it's not great. 
you know, I uh, I flagged and haven't written about yet, but there's a, a poll that came out this week where I think it's one in four people think political violence may be necessary to to achieve where the country needs to go. Not great. Not when you have someone with with who's talking the way that Trump is talking. Right. The one thing I will say that comforts me a little bit is unlike 2020. Donald Trump is not the president of the United States, so he can't bring the Justice Department and, and agencies and all that stuff to bear on trying to overturn the election. Like Mike Pence isn't going to be the VP who's being pressured to throw the election back to the states. It'll be Kamala Harris, assuming Biden wins. And that obviously makes it, you know, Trump can talk from the outside and he will. And, and I think the potential for political violence is there. I'm not trying to downplay it, but you know, in terms of the actual overturning of an election, I think it's much less likely. Um, let's see. Alexander. Hey, Chris, I'm British and just turning tuning in once every four yearly engagement with U.S. politics. Welcome. Uh, I watched your every video last time. You're an insane loss to CNN. So glad I refound you and resubbed. Dude, thank you. That's so kind. Um, again, like things happen, right? We don't get to decide how they happen or when they happen. You just get to decide how you react. But thank you for subscribing. Um, uh, are you planning to watch WrestleMania this weekend? I am. So The Rock returning Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, I'm psyched for this. I got to get more into wrestling. I'm following more wrestling blogs and more wrestling people on Twitter, X now, but uh, I got to get more into it. I'm still not into it enough. I got to be, I got to get more in. Um, it may get so good for Democrats. Texas and North Carolina are, are close and we get Florida. I doubt it. Um, I, I just don't see that. I, I certainly don't see Texas. I think Florida is hard and North Carolina is a possibility. But no, look, I, I think you're talking about Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Maybe I'm wrong. But if like Florida is in play, then, then Biden's going to win with like 300 plus electoral votes, maybe more. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Keep him going through. Uh, Mizzou Chief, what do you think the percentage breakdown of RFK Jr. supporters is between name recognition and anti-vaxxers? So let's say he has 10% support nationally. I think 8% of that support is built on the name. 1% is based on anti-vaxxers and 1% is based on everything else that he believes. Does that make sense? Um, Shelly Winter says, I think people picking up the wrong odor in coffee shops is common. Thank you. I feel better. I didn't do it on purpose. Sorry, Bryn. Um, let's see. I got a lot of Trump kids will never amount to anything <laughs> in here. Um, Amanda Strobel. I don't think any of Trump's bio biological kids will run. I think Laura Trump is gearing up for run thoughts. Yeah, so she almost ran for the Senate in North Carolina last time around, 2022. And didn't. Yes, she is. She is the co-chair of the RNC now. She is going to run for office. Laura Trump. That's Eric Trump's wife. She is going to run for office. There's no question. It's just an issue of where she's from North Carolina originally. So my guess is she'll run there. Uh, but yes, totally agree. Um, mm -hmm. Nathan Real, how do you have a civil discussion with someone who doesn't share the same set of facts, i.e. gets their info from questionable places and thinks you're a sheep for believing the mainstream media? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I think it's a huge problem, right? We we can't decide on a set of facts. And sometimes when you say things like, actually, the election wasn't stolen, people are like, oh, yeah, so they got to you too. Huh? I don't know what to do with that. Like, my goal is build a community online through YouTube, through Substack, where, like, fair-minded people can have conversations uh, about politics. But if you believe that the 2020 election was stolen, I, you know, I don't really know what to do with you. Like, it, there's no evidence that that was the case. So, like, how? How? Yeah, it's really hard. Um, comments on the Stefan Diggs trade from Garrett Brindle. I was surprised, honestly. Like, who the hell is Josh Allen going to throw the ball to at this point? Um, I think the Texans are loading up. Looks good. I'm actually contemplating. So that makes me think of CJ Stroud. Um, I'm actually contemplating a piece on uh, for my sports newsletter on the Wonderlick test. You remember that's the one they give to all the quarterbacks. It's supposed to be predictive of their success in the NFL. And CJ Stroud got like a one 
I think there's like 20 score or something. He had like a, he got like a really low score, and that's why people were a little spooked of uh, picking on uh, him, picking him. And yet he's been the best by far of the draft class. So I want to do like a history of the Wonderlick test and whether it's faded out. Uh, that's not what you asked, but that's what I think. Um, let's see. Jeffrey Strasser says boycott Starbucks. Wait, why am I boycotting Starbucks? Um, Alexi Molden, how about a segment on Kamala Harris? She's gotten some bad press, but actually she's an amazing VP. Well, I know what your view would be on that. Um, she had, she did get a ton of bad press. I, I can certainly do. I mean, look, here's what I do when it comes to the videos. I look for what's in the news, right? I don't want to just, I don't, I don't know. I want to talk about like stuff that's happening in the news. Um, so if there's a news peg for Kamala Harris, then I'll jump on that. Um, my view of it probably wouldn't be your view. I think she's, you know, she's less popular than Biden. Uh, you could say that's just because of bad press. I think she's gotten her footing a little bit more in the last year or so. I think she's a good messenger for them on abortion, for example. Um, but I don't think she's been amazing. And I think one of the reasons Biden's running again is because he doesn't think Kamala Harris could beat Donald Trump. Um, but yeah, good idea. Um, Odds of Kyle Manchester, odds of a blowout in either direction or a trifecta in either direction. But trifecta, I assume you mean White House, House and Senate. I do not think there will be a blowout at the presidential level. And the reason I say that is because we really haven't had one since Obama 08. I would definitely qualify that as a blowout. We could argue about 2012. It was close electoral college wise. Um, but 2016, uh, close. 2020, close. I assume 2024, close in terms of electoral college and the popular vote. Um I could see one party controlling the House, White House, and Senate. I think that would be Republicans because I think Republicans are going to win control of the Senate. I wrote about it this week on my Substack. Like, I just, the math is brutal. There are 23 Democratic seats and 11 Republican seats up. Three of those seats are, three of those 23 are in states Trump won, Montana, Ohio, West Virginia, and another like five or six are in states that are going to be swing states. So I just think it's hard. So I would say if there's a trifecta, it's a Republican trifecta. Um, Laura Trump is a terrible singer. Have I heard her music? I have not. I know she does sing. Uh, yeah, I have not heard that. Uh, the notorious CRG, one of my heroes, Sting, retired from wrestling at long last. I love the Stinger. When he would come down from the rafters with a face paint, God, he rocked. Um, Space Cadet, thank you for your donation. By the way, folks, if you want to donate, look, I'd take any amount. <laughs> pay for me stealing Bryn Starbucks. Uh, thank you for no, your donation. Mike Tyson versus Luke Paul. Who wins? Worth watching. Totally worth watching. Mike Tyson is going to win. Mike Tyson is not just a boxer. He's a world championship boxer. This Paul guy is like internet celebrity. I know he boxes, but no way. Um, MLB. Thoughts on the last undefeated team getting beat by the previously winless Mets? Look, it's a long season. 162 games, right? Um, one thing I want to mention, this is fun. So today for my political, my sports sub stack, the replay, I wrote a thing off. So, so the Oakland A's are going to play for three years in a minor league stadium in Sacramento while their Vegas stadium gets built. I wrote about all these cool times that major league teams have played in minor league or other ballparks. So uh, the A's actually played six games in the mid 90s in Vegas um, because Oakland Coliseum was being worked on to accommodate the Oakland Raiders. Man, does not feel like who have moved to Vegas. That <laughs> feels like a million years ago. Also, Major League Baseball played a three-game series in Hawaii, obviously Williamsport, uh, where they play the Little League World Series, the Field of Dreams games. Uh, there's interesting stuff in there. Um, Sam says Tyson versus Paul is going to be faker than WWE. Yeah, it, it could be. It could be. Uh, KM, the Bills' loss of Diggs is like when Hill left KC from Miami. They're way worse off for having lost him. Agree. Now, is Josh Allen great enough to overcome that in the way that Patrick Mahomes was great enough to overcome losing Tyreek Hill in Kansas City? We're, I guess we're going to find that out. Uh, Sleepy Scroller. Chris, suppose in 2024 Trump wins, and during his presidency, after two years, he steps down for some reason. Can he run again in 2028 Republican primary in a national ticket for a full 10-year presidency? Man, that's fascinating. I don't think so, but I don't know so. He wouldn't step down under any circumstances. I mean, unless he had to because of health. He would never step down. He will never step out of the light limelight ever. Um, Bill Davis, what news do you watch and or read? I don't watch a lot of news anymore. Um, since I left CNN, I don't really watch cable news. Um, I read the New York Times, the Washington Post, Politico, Axios, um, LA Times. I'm just looking at my uh, scroll bar. ESPN, The Athletic. Drudge, The Atlantic, New Yorker, Bloomberg, Semaphore, uh, YouTube, Wall Street Journal, Ringer. That's most of it. And then Twitter, too. Um, 
let's see. Uh, Ryan Cooley points out the Blue Jays played in Buffalo during the pandemic. Yes, absolutely, because they couldn't travel in and out of the United States. Great point. Um, Grumpy Cat. I'm not sure if you already answered this question, but who will win the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship? Great question. Um, I think South Carolina. I know they get the not much press, but they're 36 and 0 for a reason. And Don Staley is the coach of the year for a reason. UConn is too depleted, I think, to win. If they had uh, uh, AZ Fudd, who went to school with my kids for one year, um, if they had her, maybe. But I think Paige Beckers and Aaliyah Edwards are not enough, even though I think Paige Beckers is the best player in college basketball. Sorry, Caitlin Clark. I don't think that's enough. So I think Iowa will beat UConn and South Carolina will beat NC State, and then I think South Carolina will beat Iowa. Uh, Jordan Nobin, thoughts on the MLB uniform disaster? See-through uniforms, not great. I don't have any made thoughts other than that. Stephen T. Williams says, in Lexington, go to Mikado's on Main Street. It's a regional sandwich shop, large menu, decor is cool. I will. I will probably go there for lunch tomorrow. Josh Wilcox, have you read all the books on your bookshelf? What percentage? I have not read all the books on my bookshelf. 50%? 40% read? Um, let's see. Uh, Torsten Dillenberg says, greetings from Germany. Hello, Evan Sinclair. What happens to the Haley voters, fiscal conservatives, and neocons in the long run next 10 years? <sighs> I don't know. It kind of depends what happens. Does, if Trump wins again, Trumpism is ascendant within the Republican Party and the 2028 primary is about Trump, right? Like whether Trump runs again or not, it's about Trump. Like who's the inheritor to Trump? Who's the heir to Trump, et cetera, et cetera. If Trump loses in 2024, there's at least a possibility, I don't think it's a likelihood, but a possibility that Trump... Um, fades a little bit. Again, I think it's unlikely, but it's a possibility. And then there will be a fight within the Republican Party of like, do we want to nominate someone who is like Trump or someone who is unlike Trump? And that's when I think those people, the neocons, the fiscal conservatives, the Nikki Haley types will have their say, I think. But if he wins in 2024, that's not going to happen. Okay. We've gone 46 minutes. Uh, let me do this. Evil Genius says, joining late. Has Chris updated us on his lunch habits? I have. I continue to not eat great. I had a sausage, egg, and cheese sandwich from Starbucks and a stolen, uh, un unintentionally stolen drink. Uh, but I'm working on it, people. We had over 200 people on this chat for like the last 35 minutes. That is so awesome. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you spread the word to other folks. We do this every Friday for 45 minutes. I think I'm going to go an hour next week. I just have a bunch of stuff to do before I leave for Virginia, uh, Lexington, Virginia later this afternoon, so I got to go. Uh, and three, check out my sub stack. So there's a political one called So What? And there's a sports one called The Replay. I would love to have you. Free subscriber, great. If you can pay for either one, obviously this is my livelihood. Uh, this is how I'm trying to make a living. So I would really, really, really um, appreciate if, uh, you would support me. Thanks. Have a great night, day, night, evening, weekend. Take care.